Parthenogenesis is defined today as the development of an unfertilized gamete into a new individual. Here you can see the differences between normal fertilization and parthenogenesis. A parthenogenetic egg cell can become diploid either through nuclear fission or through a restitution division. As for the sex of the offspring, they are most likely to be female in species that have an XY-based sex determination system. Without the addition of the Y chromosome from a male, offspring produced from parthenogenesis will possess two X chromosomes and therefore be female. There are three types of parthenogenesis that are currently being studied today, accidental, facultative, and obligate. Obligate parthenogenesis is the most extreme form of parthenogenesis in which the organisms exclusively reproduce through asexual means. Organisms that are obligate parthenogens are thought to have transitioned into this form of asexual reproduction from other forms of reproduction. These species largely use an apomitotic form of reproduction in which offspring develop directly from mitotic divisions of unreduced ova. The female will produce an ovum with a full set of genes provided solely by the mother. The female will produce a full clone of themselves through a modification of the normal meiosis process. The germ cells undergo a process of premitotic genome doubling, also known as endoreduplication, so that the divisions of meiosis leads to a diploid genome. This has led to males no longer being part of the reproduction process and given rise to over 80 species of unisex reptiles, largely lizards, uh, but also includes one snake. The best known example of parthenogenesis among the vertebrates is within the genus of whiptail lizards known as Nimidorphorus. Specifically within the genus, the desert grassland whiptail a lizard is an all-female species of the reptile. The species only has two basic needs, finding food and avoiding predators. Although they reproduce purely through parthenogenesis, ovulation is enhanced through female-female courtship and mating rituals. The genus Ecipedocellus, which partitioned from Nimidorphorus in 2002, consists of bisexual and parthenogenetic species, with each diploid parthenogenetic species being the result of an ancestral hybridization even between members of two sexually reproducing species. Facultative parthenogenesis is the ability of females of a species to reproduce either sexually or through parthenogenesis. Facultative parthenogenesis combines the short-term benefits of parthenogenetic reproduction, such as increased rate of population growth, along with long-term benefits of sexual reproduction, genetic variation. One example of a species that can undergo facultative parthenogenesis is the mayfly, members of the Ephemeroptera order. Research from 2010 by members of the Stroud Water Research Center tested seven species of bisexual mayflies to support their hypothesis that most mayflies are facultatively parthenogenetic. They found that eggs created through parthenogenesis took longer than fertilized eggs to hatch. However, after hatching, both fertilized and unfertilized eggs develop normally into the adult form in the same manner. This delay in hatching suggests that parthenogenetic reproduction is initially suppressed until after the window for sexual reproduction passes. The parthenogenesis mechanism is only followed when necessary. An example of this is seen in Komodo dragons, an endangered species that will reproduce sexually when mates are available, but can keep lineages going through parthenogenesis when needed. At the time of one particular study in 2007, only two female Komodo dragons remained in Europe, both in captivity. When males were available, sexual reproduction occurred but the separation of females from potential mates facilitated parthenogenetic reproduction. Accidental parthenogenesis is when the development of unfertilized eggs occurs in a normally sexually reproducing species and is the rarest form. It has been recorded most often in snake and shark species. Accidental and facultative parthenogenesis can be difficult to differentiate, but differ in that accidental parthenogenesis has an extremely low frequency in hatching rates of unfertilized eggs. An example of unfertilized egg hatching rate in a species considered to undergo accidental parthenogenesis is 1 in 100,000 eggs in Drosophila. It has been shown in studies with Drosophila and stick insects that accidental parthenogenesis rates are high in particular environments where male partners are limited. This is one of the possible explanations of development of parthenogenesis in a species. In conclusion, Reproduction by parthenogenesis has both benefits and cost. In facultative species, the process of parthenogenesis provides the short-term advantage of doubling reproductive output, 
while providing the option of an immediate return to the long-term advantages of sexual reproduction and genetic variation. In other cases, it might benefit a species to convert to parthenogenetic reproduction, such as times when male partners are limited. When a species' only mean of reproduction is through parthenogenesis or any kind of asexual reproduction, there is a possibility that offspring could become increasingly homozygous, leading to no variation. Without variation, these species could be subject to endangerment or extinction without genetic heterozygosity to stabilize stress factors such as environmental changes or disease. However, certain species which reproduce through parthenogenesis exclusively have recently been shown to have the same fecundity as their bisexual predecessors. Parthenogenetic reproduction just shows that sometimes when a job needs to be done, you just need to do it yourself.